I'm Mr. V, your technician for today. Today I've got a little bit of an interesting problem we're going to go over. Uh, in my area, it is getting warmer outside, so we are running into our first air conditioning problems of the season. So, I was driving my Passat yesterday. This is a uh, 2004 Volkswagen Passat Wagon 1.8 Turbo. And I was sitting at a red light and my air conditioner started getting warm. I heard the telltale click of the AC compressor clutch disengaging. And of course that comes with the AC not coming on and warm air coming out of the vent. So um, I haven't really looked at it much further than this. I'm going to pretty much live diagnose this. If um, if you run into this problem, it can be a couple of different things. So the things that we need to look at first are definitely our pressures and make sure that they're following in line. You know, have a low pressure uh, that is correct and it's not cycling on the low side. In other words, the pressure goes down too far on the low side and it kicks out the uh, refrigerant circuit protection, which disengages the clutch. And I need to make sure that the high side is not going up too high. So. What can cause the low side to go too low? I can have low refrigerant. I could have, mostly it's gonna be low refrigerant. So that could be caused by a leak, undercharge situation, things like that. But because this problem just came about, I've had this car since November. I've ran the air conditioning several times before winter started. So because this problem is pretty new, I would imagine either I've developed a leak or I have an airflow problem. So airflow problems can cause problems on the high side. In other words, our high is going up too high, it can go four or 500 PSI sometimes. And that can be caused by you know, a clogged condenser, the external part of the condenser being clogged, the car overheating itself, which I'm not seeing because my temperature gauge is actually staying the same. It could be a fan issue, it could be a lot of different issues for this car. So first thing we're gonna do is an AC performance check. So I've done a video on AC performance check in the past and I'm gonna go ahead and link that right now to this video and you can click the link above if you want to see that video but the first thing I'm gonna do is put a set of gauges on this thing get it cranked up and see where we stand and make sure that the pressures are going to be congruent with with the temperature outside and the RPM and everything of the engine so stick around and I'll show you what I find we have the uh, gauges hooked up uh, low side and high side both hooked up and I'm seeing the pressures right now resting car off for about 86 PSI. That's pretty much normal for the temperature that we have outside. It's about 85 degrees right now. So being that it's 85 degrees, that's gonna match up pretty well with just our resting pressures. So I'm gonna have my assistant here crank up the car and we're gonna see where the pressures go from here. Alright, so our compressor clicks on, so our low side, of course, is going to fall and our high side is going to raise. So we want to see the low side anywhere between, you know, 35, 45 or so. And our high side, you know, maybe 175, 225 or so, just depending on the humidity and the air as well. And so our high side starting to creep up a little bit. Starting to creep up a lot actually. So let's just keep an eye on that high side. So yeah, your high side really should not be going up this much. Okay. So, and our low side is staying pretty stable at 35. So that's telling me we may have an airflow issue. Let me check and see if these fans. Now this vehicle has a mechanical fan and an electric fan, and the electric fan is not turning. So what we need to do, yeah, this pressure is way too high. So that's probably gonna at least be a symptom of our main problem. And so we need to see why this fan isn't coming on. Okay, so I just checked the wiring diagram and I checked the fuse box for any blown fuses and I didn't find any. And so now I'm gonna check power supply going to the fan. 
So for this cooling fan, it's going to be on the on the uh, driver side of the excuse me the passenger side of the vehicle. Then we have a mechanical fan on the driver side, and the connector for that is located behind this uh, little shield right here. And this is the connector for the fan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check for power and ground at the fan. So I'm going to put, I just got a test light right here. Um, you know, if this was more of a uh, component that's a little bit more sensitive, I would probably use a multimeter. But right now I'm just checking for preliminary power and ground. So go ahead and crank it up. All right, the, the power wire is going to be the red wire with a black tracer. And the ground wire is going to be the brown wire as on most vehicles. And on this vehicle, if you have the air conditioning on, this red wire should have power and the brown wire should have ground. So we're going to check for power here. We'll go on the fan side and I'm just going to back probe here. And I do have power going to the fan. So now I need to check ground. So what I'm gonna do, it's a really easy trick, is I'm gonna take my test light lead and I'm gonna put it on my power side or my positive battery cable and I'm gonna check the ground. I'm just going to back probe here and I have ground. Okay, so you may wanna check further up. This is a pretty long wire going all the way to the fan but you can pretty much safely say that these, this fan right here is, is faulty. So what I would do is I would go ahead and put the vehicle into service mode and I would go ahead and change out this fan. All right, so we have diagnosed this vehicle. This was a pretty easy find if you are going through the performance checks like you're supposed to, which is why I always recommend if you have an air conditioning problem to always go through and do a good thorough visual inspection and a good thorough performance check. And it's also important to remember that your air conditioning problems cannot be air conditioning problems. They might be electrical problems or bodywork problems. I've seen airflow because a piece is missing, an air dam or something is missing on the bottom of the car cause this issue as well. So it's always to remember, think outside the box when we have these cars. These cars are getting crazy nowadays and there's so many problems that can be other than just you know a refrigerant problem or a blown fuse problem or something like that. So always remember, don't get pigeonholed in your diagnostics, okay? I had a firm belief when I pulled this vehicle in, I was just a little bit low on refrigerant. So much I actually went and got some refrigerant to put in this vehicle. So. I had in my, my mind, I had pigeonholed the repair. This was just going to be a, you know, dye inject with a fill up and then we're trying to find a leak. And it turned out that, that the pressures on the low side and everything were fine. They weren't giving me any in, indication that there was a, a low refrigerant level and it ended up being an airflow level. So, um, you know, keep this in mind when you go forward in your diagnostic procedures and, you know, thanks for watching my video. Uh, if you got anything from this, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to my channel. It really does help me put out more videos. And for now, uh, we'll see you next.